Hello? Hello, Hector? Yes. Yes, sir. This is uh, Iz from MMA Jam Live. How are you doing this evening? Good, man. Good, man. I, I'm on my way to the boxing gym. I get a workout in, you know, work my hands. So, what are you up to? No, just hanging out. We had a little bit of communication issue with uh, with my microphone and everything, so we were trying to get a hold of you. I don't know if it was going through or not, but uh, glad to have you on. It's an honor. Thank you, man. I mean, it, it's it's a good time. I mean, like, yeah, I was, like, reaching for my bag and put my phone down. I was, you know, throwing my gear in there and stuff, and uh, I caught on the last ring. I started running for it. It was just too late. I was like, no, it was epic. <laughs> That's funny. Good stuff. Uh, so we'll get right into it so we can uh, try to get this in as quickly as possible so you can get to your, uh, your class. Um, now, you, you've been in the game for quite some time now, uh, taking part in your first pro fight back in 2006. Uh, what made you decide that MMA was something you wanted to partake in? Well, in all honesty, like, um, I wanted to go to college and wrestle. I, I, I That's what I wanted to do. It was a dream of mine, but... Um, you know, me being from Mexico and stuff, I had to do other options and stuff. You know, at the time, I just, you know, either I could get the scholarships, you know, or whatever, you know what I mean, whatever the issue was at the time. So I did, my dad was just like, hey, you're going to fight here in a week or so. And I was like, hey, all right, whatever, let's do it. And I just fell in love with that. It was, it was like it was like second nature to me. It was like, that's this is awesome. So, like, uh, yeah, since 06, I've just been grinding at it, man. MMA has been everything to me. It's done everything, you know, for the last eight years. You know, I, I can kind of relate to that in a sense. Um, I, When I was in high school, I never took the SAT. I never, so obviously there was no scholarship offer. So instead of, obviously I didn't fight, but I ended up joining the military. So I can kind of relate to that in, in a sense that, you know, I didn't go to college. I just ended up taking a different road. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I, I honestly, I mean, I started wrestling, and I thought that was going to be everything for me. I thought maybe one day I could possibly, you know, get good enough to make it or try out for the Olympics and stuff. And uh, when, you know, but maybe it just wasn't meant for me to to wrestle, you know. So it was just like it opened other doors, so I had to take any option at that time, you know. It, 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 doors open other doors, man. It, it's always a good, uh, a good path to just chase other dreams, too. Yeah, and it definitely worked for you now. To, to begin your pro career, you actually fought six times in a span of, of a, a little over four months. Uh, so I guess it's safe to say that we can credit that level of activity to you instantly being hooked on, on mixed martial arts, correct? Yeah. Um, when I was when I started wrestling, like, I would always be like, how am I going to get good at this, you know? So I just kept wrestling and trying to get as many matches as I could. And, you know, I'm not – you know, a, a fighter, really, you know, I never, like, gotten fights and stuff at school or anything like that, so, like, I didn't know how to fight, honestly, I still don't know how to fight, so, like, I just feel like, you know, doing doing it live, so I just took as many fights as I could, I was like, look, I'm just gonna learn, you know, I'm just gonna keep doing it till I get it, you know, and that's what I went, my mentality was at the time, it was like, look, just take this fight, take that fight, fight whoever, and, I mean, eventually things will fall into place if it's meant to be, but I, I really, really love the, the sport, so, like, I just wanted to do it. I couldn't get enough of it, you know? You know, it's weird that because normally with people with that level of activity, usually they have mixed results. But you, in your first six fights, you went five and one. So it actually benefited you to, to get that much experience under your belt because, I mean, you, you, it, you benefited in the sense that you, you had a five and one record uh, in your first six. So it looked like you you were picking up stuff at a rapid pace and, and it helped you in your in your first couple of fights. Yeah, it, it was definitely, like, a rush, but at the same time, like, uh, a lot of my wrestling was helping me a lot because, you know, I would go out there, and I remember how I threw punches back then, and I was like, wow, dude, I cannot believe you called that a punch. And uh, But I would immediately go to wrestling, you know what I mean? I would immediately try to shoot in or something and uh, try to go for the grappling part of the, the fight and try to win that because, I honestly, I, I didn't have any hands at all back then, and I still don't. I mean, like, I'm trying, you know, but, like, um... Yeah, it was a big part, but wrestling helped. Now, now many people don't know this, but you actually fought on Bellator's second ever card back in 2009. Uh, you fought Lyman Good in that fight. Uh, after that tough loss, what was your outlook on your career, and did you think you'd ever get another shot at, at a big show? Um, well, you know, I cut a lot of weight for that fight, 
and I, I like, 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 like I said, it's all experience, you know. Like, I didn't really, I had never made seventy, you know, not since high school. I wrestled in, in high school, and it was at one seventy and one eighty five. But when I wrestled seventy, you know, I could do it all the time. But when that fight came on, like, they were like, "Hey, it's a one seventy pound tournament. Can you make seventy? I was like, "Yep, I've, I've done it before four years ago, so I, I assume I can do it now." So I cut the weight. It took a lot out of my body, you know what I mean? So, like, I didn't make 70 again for a while, you know, and um, it shocked my body a lot. So what I learned from that was that, you know, you got to do things right. And so I fought at 85, you know I mean? I like to eat. I'm a big guy. You know what I mean? I walk around probably 220, 225, you know. I, li I like food. So, like, I stopped cutting that much weight, and I, was, I just decided that I would just fight 85 and, you know, I mean, of course, I wanted to get to, you know to the UFC and stuff. Uh, you know, I, I always I always expect to you know to always make gains in my career. So I'm not really like you know setting myself to one spot. You know, but um, like I kept doing that, and you know, like now you know for the big fights, I, yeah, I'm gonna go 170. 70 is my weight class. I, I want to diet for like you know eight weeks. I want I want to fully prepare for that fight. Back then, it was just like, just take fights, dude. Just take fights and learn. It's a learning experience until you get there. And after you get there, you you know what you got to do and not do. So up until now, it's been a big learning process, you know. But now, it's like, I guess I can say that I'm ready to, like, do everything I've learned, you know, for my next fight. Now, you know, I, 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 um, I have the belief that life is just poetic in a sense. I think that it's like everything has meaning. And it, what intrigues me about your situation and, and, and people you have fought is those of you out there, I mean, we all know that Lyman Good tried out, obviously, for the same season you're on currently, uh, and he actually didn't make it into the house. So I thought that was just an interesting thing for you to see that, yeah, you know, yeah, you lost to him earlier on in your career, but you made it in and he didn't. So I thought that was very poetic. Yeah, I mean, he looked a little smaller than he did last time. Um, but I mean, I wish him the best. I mean, he's a really good athlete. I mean, he's, he's in phenomenal shape. You know, I, we'll see him again. I'm hoping, I mean, shit, I'd fight him again, but I mean, maybe at 70, I don't know if he's staying at 85 or what, but yeah, this is pretty poetic, I, I guess. Yeah. You know, I don't mean it in, in a, in a way that, you know, I like Lyman good. I'm actually a, a big fan of, of Lyman. I like him a lot. But I, I thought that when I was doing my research for this, I was like, oh, wow, look, you know, like it's just weird how that, that worked out that years down the road, uh, probably like, what, five years ago you faced them? You, I mean, you fought them? So it's like it's weird yeah. that that whole thing came full circle with, with you and Lyman. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. I, it was a good time. I enjoyed talking to him. Definitely, definitely. Now, you also fought at, at Bellator 6 where you won by TKO in 19 seconds. Uh, due to an arm injury over Ira Boyd. Now, after that bout, you wouldn't uh, fight again for nearly two years. Was that due to an injury? No, okay. First of all, uh, Ira Boyd, I don't know where the arm injury came from. That, that was funny. Because that guy was like, I don't know, he, he was just funny. He was a character. But, like, I don't know, I think I leg kicked him and took him down, and he, like, just verbally submitted. I don't know what happened, but he wasn't injured. But, uh, yeah, I took that some time off, man. Um Again, I cut to 70, you know what I mean? And I was, I was and after the fight was at 70, so, like, that whole little chunk of time, you know, my body was real depleted, and, like, I could feel it, you know? So I needed a little bit of a break. I, I kind of went out uh, back to Ohio. I was staying in Indiana at the time. I went back to Ohio and just kind of reevaluated everything and just, just took a little bit of a break, you know what I mean? Because my body was just really taking damage from cutting weight and training so hard and stuff, and... You know, sometimes you'll need that, you know, but um, it helped. You know, you just got to get away for a little bit, you know, just take some time off. Yeah, I definitely understand that. As as we mentioned earlier on the, in the interview, I think, I mean, you, you had a, a a huge amount of fights in your first couple of years, so I think it was only natural that, I mean, that you took that time away. Now, the reason I asked you is because no one's really clear on that. I mean, all you see is a two-year gap, so it's not real clear uh, why you uh, why you were away? But uh, thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I had some other issues too. I mean, like I had a girlfriend at the time, you know. What I mean, and that took some of my time away. I was just kind of like lost in my own in my own world, man. I mean, you know, 
and you know, I think that fighting is a lot more than what people see, man. It's a lot of emotional and mental issues and, and stuff like that because you're constantly battling something, you know, whether you got an injury on your mind or you actually have a fight coming up. It's a, it's a lot of stuff. So I just needed to really get away from everything. It was it was a much needed two years off. Definitely. Now now going into this uh, going into the tryouts for for this season of tough in the trial process. What what was your thought process during that time, like when you were first trying out for the show? Well, I mean, again, like, I mean, I I, I guess you could say I got a lot of issues, but going right before the show, like, I kind of left camp randomly. I just decided, hey, you know, like, nothing's really happening right now. A couple fights had fallen through, you know what I mean? And and I was just like, whatever, you know, and, and the fight that I did get, you know, I mean, I wasn't really satisfied. I thought I trained too hard for, for that fight, and that guy didn't even give me a fight. So I was like, man, I was just kind of bummed out. I ended up going to Myrtle Beach for a little bit and just hanging out, uh, meeting up with some old friends, and was there for a couple of weeks, and then, like, went to Indiana, and, again, I was just, just in my own world. And, you know, the child came, uh, came along, and I went and tried out, but, I honestly didn't think that they were going to call me because, like, I had tried out before, same scenario, tried out. They were like, yep, we'll call you. And, you know, it, it, it's a slim chance sometimes, right? So I was just like, whatever, you know, I'll try out. I did as best as I could. You know, I looked good, you know. It was all right. And then just went back and chilled, you know, and started cutting weight because I figured maybe. But, you know, like, the tryouts, man, they kind of just, like, spring up on you. You know, they just let you know, and you just got to be ready, you know, whenever they give you the date. I hear you on that. Now, now this is a, a common question that I ask for people from Tough. You know, I uh, we had mostly everybody from uh, Season 18, and I ask them the same question just to see what kind of response they give. Uh, where were you? Where were you at when you got the call saying that you had the opportunity to fight? And... Um, what was your immediate reaction? Oh man, it was pretty pretty funny actually. Like, okay, they called me and I was like, they told me, "Hey, you're a second alternate," and I'm like, "Oh, okay. What does that mean?" Well, basically, if the first alternate doesn't make it, you're the second alternate. So I'm like, "All right." So still, you're telling me, "Hey, it's a slim chance." You know what I mean? So I'm like, "All right, I'm just gonna continue to cut weight." It was like the Monday, and I was like 200 pounds. And, you know, they call me, they're like, hey, you're flying out at, like, 5.30. This guy bailed or backed out or, you know, got hurt or something. So I'm like, oh, dang, I got to weigh in tomorrow. You know what I mean? And I was like, so I ran to the sauna real quick, ran over to the Y, got in there to cut some weight, went back to uh, back to the house, got on the flight, ended up in Vegas. And then still they're like, you know, try to be close, but we're not sure if you're going to get on. So I'm just like the whole time, like, man, why am I even doing this for? But I'm still thinking this is like a big, big thing. I'm like, this is like a dream come true if it does go down. So I, that kept me going. But, like, I'm laying there in a the sauna, and I look over, and this guy just having the horrible, like, the most horrible time ever. He's just like, he like I, he literally ran his, like rammed his face into uh, the door as he was trying to open it. So I was like, that guy looks bad, and he looks about my weight. You know, and I didn't know he was, like, cutting, too, but we, we were all cutting. So I just, like, lay there in the sauna a little longer, and as soon as I got out, they're like, dude, that guy just passed out. He's going to the hospital. I was like, wow. I was like, how do things like this happen in my life? They just spring up, you know, and next thing you know, I'm fighting, man. I was just like, whoa. Yesterday was a second alternate, today I'm actually fighting. So it was a big awakening moment, you know. Well, that's that's actually a unique scenario because no one I've ever talked to has ever had that. Like, I guess obviously it worked out good for you, so great. But it's like that has to be tense, not like going there and not knowing exactly if you were going to fight. I mean, you just had to wait until like I guess the very last minute, apparently. Yeah, and the whole time I couldn't eat or like really drink much because I was watching my weight. You know, it was just like nerve wracking. Oh, jeez. Now, now but an amazing experience, mind. nonetheless. I mean, it was awesome. It was like, it was, oh, it was yeah, like I mean, I was excited and nervous and scared, and I was like, man, you know, I was just bummed out. But it was, it was such a great, great thrill, man. It was great. Absolutely. Now, you you defeated Adrian Miles by submission to get into the house. Uh, can you describe your emotions as you were getting your hand raised after that fight to get into the house? I mean, 
I felt like I was floating, man. As soon as he's like, I, I felt him tap my shoulder, and I was like, dude, this guy just tapped. I just was like, like floating, you know, like I, I stood up and I was just on top of the world for that second. I was like, whoa, this is awesome. I was like, dang, you know, I'm not. I guess I'm I'm not going back home right now. You know, I'm gonna chill here for a while. It was really really cool because. Like I told you, dude, my brothers and stuff, you know, they look up to me. And, like, I remember calling my brother, and I was like, bro, I don't know if I'm going to be able to call you tomorrow. So I'm going to tell you right now that I got, I might have to fight tomorrow, but I still don't know. And then I couldn't even call him and be like, bro, I won, you know, because they take our phones away. But, you know, it was, man, it was crazy experience, man. I've never felt that, that like, high up in the air before. You know, that that's great. That You know, the funny thing that it always, like, Obviously, you can't reveal the, you can't reveal the results. Obviously, we all know that, but it's it feels like a, a military installation where okay, the minute you walk in, give me your phone. You know, like that. That's always been funny to me, even though I I completely understand it and, and it's necessary. But just the thought of someone just saying, "Hey, give me your phone," and you're like, "What?" You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you know, now it's crazy. Yeah. There, like, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. Were you were you actually expecting that? I mean, I'm sure you were. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I was expecting it, but when they actually did it, it was just like, whoa, okay, we're really like, you know, at, at that moment, we 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 belong to them, so it's like, whoa, it's kind of cool to belong to the UFC, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, for me, and this is this is probably mildly inappropriate, but it, for me, it'd be like, oh, I got to make sure I have no like nude photos of anybody in there or something like that, you know. I know it's inappropriate, but <laughs> I guess cer certain things like that could happen, you know. No, well, listen to this, listen to this. Okay, same scenario with me, right, you know, because I don't know what's on my phone. I changed my passcode, oh, right? I was like, man, no one's going to be able to get in my – this is unbreakable, you know what I mean? I changed my passcode. Well, I forgot it, but – yeah, basically I did that right before they took my phone. I was like, man, are they going to get in my phone? Like, what are they doing? It was funny. <laughs> yeah, next thing you know is every like, contact. Oh, my God, why why, why are they tweeting that out about me? What is what is this? How the hell did this make it online? Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, that would be what I would be afraid of. But anyway, that's, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, now in, episode, <laughs> in episode two, you fought uh, Pendred. Uh, you, you know, you lost a close decision. Uh, razor close. I mean, you won the first round, and the second, uh, second and third didn't go your way. Now, based on your own assessment, what do you think went wrong in that fight? Well, I don't know. I, I, you know, yeah, I came out. I'm not saying I was in the best shape, and I, you know, I wasn't at all because, like I said, leading up to that fight, you know, I had a kind of, I was away from camp. I wasn't in Florida, so I was like, dang, I should be back in Florida right now, but I couldn't do it. So, like. I don't know, like, I hit him a couple of times, and I got really excited, right? I, I, I just think I, I had an adrenaline dump, you know what I mean? When I got, after we got in a couple of scrambles in the first round, you know what I mean? I saw that I could beat him, and he was very beatable. So I just chased it and chased it and chased it without setting it up. So I think that's what went wrong, you know? I wasn't smart about, you know, attacking him. I wasn't smart at all. And, um... Again, it's helping me learn more and more so I know what to do later on in my career. But uh, that's what happened, man. Like, I blew my entire load right there. I was like, damn. I just completely exhausted yeah. myself. Because you, yeah. you, you heard him pretty – you heard him, you know, good in the first round. Now, now I'm, I'm not sure if you can answer this question. I don't see why you couldn't um, because it's a real, like, general question now. As far as, uh, like, was your, was your fight uh, against Pendred in close proximity to uh, to your fight to get into the house? See, I don't think that reveals anything. I just, it just placement, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know if that reveals anything. Uh, I honestly don't understand the question, but I'll tell you this. Like, okay, uh, was, uh, was the fight with Pendred close, like, was it um, shortly after your fight to get into the house? Oh, of course. Uh okay. That was the first fight. I was, uh, well, the I thing, mean, like... The, like, the we, thing is, like, the, the, uh, sorry to cut you off. The thing is, is that we've had people come on here and said, yeah, my fight was actually, uh, came later in the season, but it aired at a different time. So it's like, it's weird that, like, sometimes they air the fights uh, uh, a different time than they actually took place. Yeah, well, I mean, if you watch the first episode, I was basically, like, one of the last picks. We basically fought, you know, to get in, 
and then they picked me right away to fight. So, I mean, luckily I was healed. I wasn't healed completely, but I was good enough shape to and healthy enough to compete again. So, like, we were the first fight, you know, starting the season. So, like, I was like, damn. You know what I mean? Um, Had to cut weight again real cool. Like, probably within a couple weeks, a week of each each other. Had to make a lot of weight cut. Mostly water, though. I mean, I just cut a lot of water. I had to. But making weight that close, like, I think it, it, it's not, it's hard on you, you know, it's hard on your body. I completely agree. Now, as far as, uh, how, how would you describe your overall experience on uh, The Ultimate Fighter and as part of uh, Team Edgar? Man, being on Frankie's team is the best. I mean, Coach Frankie is, is, is such, such a great fighter, man. Like, I don't, I don't say that about him all the time. I mean, he's, he's a grinder. He gets in and gets, you know, he gets it done. I I really enjoyed learning from him, man. He he helped me out a lot. You know, he helped me pinpoint some of my mistakes and things I needed to work on. And I've been working with those hints. Like, you know, he he's such a like, competitive person. I love his mentality and everything. And uh, it was it was great, man. I I really enjoyed my time there. Definitely, and you you have a a rock star cast. I mean, you have you know Mark Coleman there. Not not Mark. Uh, you had Henzo Gracie come in. Excuse me, not Mark Coleman. I mixed that up for a minute. Uh, you had Henzo Gracie come in, and that must have been an incredible experience as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a jujitsu guy, but I'm trying to be a jujitsu guy. You know, so like because I mean, I've wrestled before and stuff, but. Um, I've always heard of, you know, the Gracies, Gracies, and I'm just like, whoa, you know, I get to meet Henzo. And, and he's so cool. You know, he's the coolest person ever. Such a great person. And um, really taught me a few things that, you know, helped me tweak my some submissions and stuff that I needed help on. And, I mean, that was an honor, man. That was, like, really cool. Like, he's a hero to me. I mean, he's a grappling master. So I'm just like, geez, you know, this is really awesome, overwhelming feeling. Yeah, I don't know how I would have reacted. I probably would have freaked out. Um now, yeah, now we, we, I was just, pretty we just oh, definitely. Now we we just heard the announcement of uh, the Ultimate Fighter Latin America with UFC 180 taking place in Mexico City. As a Latino, or specifically a Mexican fighter, uh, what did that announcement mean to you? That's big. You know, to fight in my country, ah, uh, man, I, I I'm jumping on that card somehow. Even if I don't fight, I'm gonna be there somehow. I don't know. That's huge. I mean, Mexico, dude, you know, that's probably, like, I don't know. I consider it, like, fighting capital. I mean, because they scrap down there. They they get down. They love their fighting, every style. You know, and, um, I mean, boxing is huge. MMA is going to be way bigger, you know, in Mexico, I believe, because, I mean, like, they really get into it. And they'll strike a lot more, I think. But, man, it would be a blessing to get on that, I think. It would be amazing. I completely agree, and as a Puerto Rican myself, I'm I'm hopeful that we can have like a, a Puerto Rico versus Me- like Puerto Rico Mexican and a Mexican fighter on there just to renew that. You know, it's not a friendly rivalry, so I can't use that word. For me, it is because I'm not as crazy. man. Why are you trying to make a world war, man? Oh man, you see, I, I wasn't even trying to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Yeah, I'll but, just play. Uh, I, I think it would be cool, you know. It'd be like the, you know, it would remind me of the days of Trinidad, you know, like Trinidad de la Hoya, for instance, it, you know, stuff like that. You know, I think it's, it, it'll be pretty cool to see, and I'm, I'm hopeful at least one. I, I don't know of any Puerto Rican fighters, uh, to be honest, but I'm hopeful that one gets on because you know, damn sure there's gonna be at least one or two <laughs> Mexican fighters that make it. Yeah, um, yeah, and like. Yeah, I'm, I believe it's an MMA world now. You know, it's not even like it's an MMA world. Everybody's picking up on it, and it, it's it's just an MMA world. Completely agree. Completely agree. Now, before we let you off the hook here, um, where can we find you on Facebook and or Twitter? Uh, my Twitter is what the heck, what the heck, you know, like what the heck. And then my Facebook, Hector <laughs> Bia, man. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm kind of a girl. I, I like all that social media stuff. Um, Instagram, you know, Team Urbina MMA. And, uh, yeah, Snapchat. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> you know, to be to be honest, Hector, I just wanted you to say your Twitter handle because it's, it's very unique. So I just wanted you to say it. <laughs> yeah, I man. I mean, so I, I, have, 
have everything in front of me. I could easily tell the listeners what everything is, but I, I just wanted you to say it, you know, sorry. That's funny. Yeah, man, <laughs> I'll tell you a story about that. One time, like, I had this buddy, my buddy Ox Wheeler, down in uh, New, in, uh, New Mexico. Every t- He's my hair cut, my, my hair guy. He always hooks me up. So, like, every time I'd call him, like, he'd be like, what the heck? You know? And I was just like, Hey, that can be my Twitter handle. <laughs> it was funny. I'm beginning to wonder if that's like, you know, I, I live in South Florida, um, and I, I, I feel like that's kind of like a saying. Like, we, like down here, we just say, what the, you know, like, we don't even yeah. say the heck. We just say, what the. So it's like, I'm starting to believe this is like a, a Florida thing or something. Yeah, I live in South Florida too, man. Uh, I, I agree. Yeah, they say that a lot. It's funny. Yeah, I, I just moved down here like less than six years ago from New York, and I was like, "What the hell is what the like? Well, how about we finish the yeah. sentence here, you guys?" <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, last question, Hector. I know you got the training. Um, any thank yous you like to give? Any shout outs you like to give to anyone at all? Oh yeah, man. To every MMA fan ever. I mean, you guys keep keep this sport going, you know. Um, and obviously, it's my mom. Her birthday's this month, so. I'm I'm really excited. Um, my little brothers are fighting May 16th. They're turning pro, um, so that'll be fun. I'm excited for that. I'm, I'm actually out in Texas right now running their camp. So, uh, yeah, I got my little brothers turning pro. They're growing up. I'm kind of excited. Proud big brother. Definitely, and we wish them the best of luck. Um, now, there's a there's a there's a bit of a tradition, Hector, and and based on your personality, I'm sure you'll get a kick out of this. Uh, we usually like to ask one of our fans to ask a ridiculous question, and they normally pick a ridiculous question. And here it is: Who do you think would win in a fight between a gorilla and an alligator? Well, that's a hard one. See, because me and uh, my my roommate Justin Skaggins, we're always talking about how who would win between a kangaroo and a shark, you know? But like. A gorilla and an alligator. Okay. I'm, is it a big gorilla? Um, I don't know. I think the gorilla's got better grappling skills. So if as long as it oh. takes the back, I think it's got them. That is, you know what? We've asked many people, and they've just gave flat-out answers. You were oddly specific. You said he had better grappling skills. That that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is that's outstanding. That's a great answer right there. <laughs> Yeah, I have to go with the gorilla. So yeah, oh, man. man. You d- <laughs> well, uh, we we appreciate you t- uh, taking the time out of your day to chat with us. It was a tremendous honor. Uh, anytime you like to jump on, we're we're all family here, and we support you. And and thank you again. Hey man, thank you, man. It's been an honor to be on this, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And and and, and for my non-Spanish speaking self, I'll try this. Mucho gusto por hablar contigo. Sí, muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Saludos a todo mi México. Ajá, ok. Gracias, Bobby. <laughs> ok, bye. Bye.